Joining me now, though, from the Sporty News, college football writers. Good to have Bill Bender on the drive here on ESPN 700. Bill, how are you, man? Hey, I'm doing well. Thank you very much. Thanks for uh, taking the time. Um, in preparation for the interview, interview I was checking out um, your recent work, and I saw what you, uh, what you put up about Clay Helton and USC, and obviously we're going to talk some Utah football and where you think they rank, but one of the uh, teams that, of course, is thought to um, – thought to really challenge Utah for that Pac-12 South title is USC. So what did you uncover when you uh, wrote about Clay Helton's squad? Well, I mean, when you put a Pac-12 or bust mentality on it, it makes it tough. I mean, because it's not, not an easy job as it is, you know, and where they're at as a program coming off a of five and seven season. You know, obviously the hire of Graham Harrell may help, but it's been a long off season for USC. There's a lot of presumptions being made in terms of urban Meyer. Um, I'm not quite there yet, but it's a huge year for the Trojans. And uh, the fact that they could finish anywhere from first to sixth in that division probably makes it that much more important. So where do you see Utah? Um, I, I mean, you don't necessarily have to say specifically first in the Pac-12 South or whatever, but generally speaking, when you think about the Utes this year, what are you expecting from them? First in the Pac-12 South. There you go. I mean, All right, touche. That's, that's, that's what I want to hear. I mean, but, yeah, I mean, they should. they got a tough defensive line, good quarterback. They're getting Lee Ludwig back. I think, you know, from the people I've talked to out there, and yourself included, they seem to think that's going to bring – an added dimension of continuity to the offense around Zach Moss. Um, You know, I guess the thing with the Pac-12 is what I say every year. I think Washington, Oregon, and Utah are all very good teams. Uh, But in order to get to the playoff, you can't really stub your toe. Like Washington a couple years ago stubbed their toe at Arizona State. you got to win all of those games. And it's hard to do in the Pac-12 because I don't think – you don't have an Alabama or Clemson where one team's better than everybody else by a lot but I think the bottom's closer to the middle and the top. Generally speaking, how do you think people view this Utah program? I mean, I've been in this market for a long time. I went to school at the University of Utah, and, you know, when I was there, the football program took a backseat to the the basketball program as Rick Majerus every year was taking his squad on on runs. So it's been an interesting seat to watch their ascension. What's the reputation of the University of Utah across the country? Yeah, I bet you have a Van Horn jersey somewhere. Absolutely. Club, Andre uh, Miller was my guy. That was my guy. Yeah, I mean, that's a good choice, too. Yep. Um, you know, being an Ohio guy, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, you know, but, but yeah, I think we look at Utah as a steady program. And, you know, in the same vein as whether whether it's fair or not, you're kind of treated like a Northwestern or a, you know, not quite Florida, because Florida's won a couple natties. But, I mean, just a solid program that's going to get you eight or nine wins. I think they've done a nice job of moving up the ranks. For those, it's something I always tell people. If you want to, for those that like UCF or Boise or whoever, I mean, Utah and TCU kind of provided the blueprint of how to get into the Power Five, you know, and, and how to kind of take your lumps in those conferences, which both of them did. And now Utah is competing for Pac-12 championships, which had to be the Kyle Whittingham's goal. So I think a solid program, probably not re- – I mean, I think you've gotten enough hype this, this offseason as a playoff sleeper, but I think part of that is we're in a landscape where it's hard to come up with playoff sleepers and sound original. Same question, Bill. And by the way, Bill Bender is our guest. Hit him up on Twitter. It's at BillBender92, National College Football Writer from the Sporting News. Um, Bill, same question about um, about BYU, um, and then I want to ask about the rivalry. But generally speaking, across the country, I mean, BYU, they haven't had the best stretch. They're, not, they're maybe not the program they were in the 80s, but still certainly a fine institution. Nationwide, what's their reputation? And I, I think they're they're still searching to try to get it breakthrough to that Power Five, and they've done everything they, they can do. I mean, playing in how many – power five game teams you need to schedule their september is always traditionally as brutal as anybody right now especially with the teams they're scheduling on top of utah um you know obviously the tradition goes back to the 80s they are other than notre i mean other than notre dame yeah there's no group of five team has ever won a national championship byu and, and notre dame are the last two to do it outside of the power five so it's just getting that identity back i think they're going to be pretty good this year i, I like the quarterback but when you play that many tough teams out of the go, it's like they're it's you almost want that in reverse. You want your biggest games to be in late October, November, not early in the season when you maybe don't know what kind of team you have. 
You know, you referenced it, Bill, and I, I mean, I think it's just going to be difficult for BYU to find consistent footing until a packed or a, a big five, P5 situation manifests itself. Um, it's kind of a cliche, age-old question at this point, but can you foresee any scenario in the foreseeable future where BYU gets a P5 invite? Not unless, the, not unless we have some dominoes fall within the Big 12 or the Pac-12 where they either go to a super conference model or – we just stay at where we're at. But I, I thought when the Big 12 was kind of auditioning expansion candidates of, that BYU would have made sense. But remember, it's not just – you're not just taking the football program. You're taking a school. You're taking religion. You're taking a lot of things on top of it. And, and Notre Dame, same difference. I mean, I've, I, I've grown up in the Midwest. I've campaigned for Notre Dame to join a conference since I can remember. And they've done it in everything but football. But that's part of their identity too. So – you know, if, if it helps, I know BYU, the difference between BYU and Notre Dame, BYU wants to be in a Power 5 conference, and I don't think it'll happen unless we have another big domino effect-like event with uh, expansion. Maybe the 18 playoff, whenever that happens, brings that on. Do you think that's on the horizon at all? I think we got a, well, I'll put it this way. It'll go to eight when they want it to go to eight. The people that decide that, right. the, the committee wants it to go to eight, that's when it will. It won't be when... I like to joke, it won't be when Twitter says so or somebody gets left out of the playoff. I mean, we've seen Alabama and Ohio State fight for a playoff berth. We've seen Georgia try to get into the playoff with two losses. I think before we get there, a couple things have to happen. One, I don't see us going to a playoff until everybody's playing the same number of conference games within the Power Five. Um, you know, if they go to eight and the SEC and ACC are still playing eight conference games, they're liable to get half the field in the 18 playoffs and then people are really going to be mad. But, uh, you know, I think that's something to keep in mind. I, I wouldn't be opposed. I think it'll happen down the line. Maybe a college football commissioner will happen, but it's just like the NFL. Like, can you imagine if the, uh, like the Steelers played less division games than the bears? Do you think the bears would have a problem with that? Right. Right, right. No, no. And speaking of scheduling, Bill, we talked about this yesterday. I'm for scheduling uniformity as much as possible. I think it's lame that Bama can schedule four cakewalks and never go on the road. Um, are, are, do you agree with me? And if so, how do we get there? Well, like I said, I think everybody should either play nine or eight. And, and you know, some of these other – the Pac-12 and the Big Ten are the ones that do the honorable thing, so to speak. You know, you don't see a lot of – you don't see the Pac-12. They schedule a few, but you don't see Pac-12 schools playing a lot of FCS opponents. You don't see the Big Ten doesn't schedule them at all anymore. Uh, some of that might be because of what App State did to Michigan. Who knows? But, um, you know, I think that's part of it. By di They've done the honorable thing by making their schedules more difficult with nine conference games, while at the same time it's made, them, made it harder to make it to the playoffs, especially not in a – you know, take a, the Big 12 is a little bit different because they, they all play each other. So you're gonna, you can get a rematch in the Big 12 championship game like Oklahoma did, but – you might not get that in the Pac-12 or Big Ten, and I think those two conferences are doing things the right way, but all at the same time making their playoff path harder. Sure. All right, last thing, Bill, then we'll set you loose. Um, can somebody crash Bama-Clemson? Can somebody get in the way of this? And if somebody does, who will that team be? Um, no. <laughs> I yeah. mean, yeah, maybe, maybe Georgia, maybe Ohio State. Maybe I, I just – outside of those four – I don't know if there's a true national championship contender. Like the days of lightning in a bottle are really hard to come by when Alabama and Clemson have this shadow over the entire sport. And when they have every, they already have everything. And what makes it worse, um, Spence, is they, they have the two best quarterbacks too. So I don't, I don't know how you beat those guys more than once. Um, I guess Georgia, like I said, Georgia, Florida, or uh, Georgia, Ohio State, Florida, Texas, Oklahoma, Michigan, LSU. Who knows? Utah could get in the playoff, but I think you got to be. You got to remember, you got to win two when you get there. And Alabama and Clemson are the best position to do that. Yep. No, I I tend to agree. Hey, man, thanks so much for the time, Bill. Appreciate it today, and and let's chat throughout the college football season. All right, be well. Hey, you too. Thanks for having me.